So obviously something that's very important when you're creating these games here on your PC or your laptop is imagining how they're going to be played on the actual device, the iPad or the iPhone that you're going to be publishing them on. So you can imagine that this control, this D-pad down here is going to be controlled by your thumb. And right now the way that we have everything set up, if I simply click and release on this touch area, it's basically going to stop when I let go and go when I push down. And then same thing over on right, bottom, and left. But you can imagine that if you have your thumb here, you're probably not going to push and then release and then push and then release and then push and release. What you're going to be doing, which is a little bit more natural, is you're going to be sliding your thumb around this D-pad into different locations. So look what happens here when I do a little bit of a sliding action. I'm going to click on the right touch area, but what I'm going to do is click and then slide off of it and then release and you can see that your character just keeps going off into space here. Let me reset the scene so you, I can do that again. So if I just click and release he'll move and stop but if I click and drag off that area and then release he'll just continue moving. And again maybe this is exactly the way you want to set up your character. Maybe this will be useful for you to have the player do a click and slide and then basically your actor will continue moving in that direction but maybe you don't want that to happen so let's go ahead and, and set up another actor that will prevent this from actually happening so we'll click the back arrow click the plus icon to create a new actor and I'm gonna name this actor no touch and again I'll just go back to my images tab here and drag that temp image so we see a little bit of transparency when we drag it into our scene. So what we want to do is set up this no touch area so that it basically lines the perimeter of these four touch areas that we've already created. So I'm going to click and drag that down here into my scene. I'll zoom in a bit so you can see what I'm doing. And again I can hold the alt key to pretty much duplicate anything so click and drag to duplicate that. still holding Alt and I'll just basically duplicate it a few times so it fills up the outside of these touch regions. So now you can imagine that when you're sliding your thumb from one region to the next or sliding outside that region, it's always going to come in contact with this no touch area. So let's go ahead and apply a rule to the no touch area that will stop our actor in its tracks. So I'll double click on no touch and we'll create a rule. And for this one we want to change this to when touch is inside we're going to change an attribute so again I'll go over to my behaviors click and drag change attribute and what we want to do is switch that controls attribute over to none so essentially when the player's finger reaches this no touch area or is inside this no touch area we're going to switch the game controls attribute over to none so let's see what happens now when I preview this so again if I just click the up our character will just move up, I'll click and release and down click and release and then over to the right click and release but if I click and drag you can see the minute I reach this no touch area it's going to go ahead and stop the character in its tracks that way when you're sliding your finger around this d-pad it's going to react the way that you want it to react so basically now that we've pretty much set up our entire touch area uh, let's go ahead and remove the transparency from all of these actors and basically make them fully opaque so that we don't need to see them. So now that I'm in the no touch actor I'll just simply click on the graphics pull down and uncheck the visibility and let's do this for our other actors as well. Double click on up, go to graphics over here on the left, uncheck visibility and just repeat this for the other ones as well.
and even though I'm turning their visibility off, they're still active and selectable inside the scene. But we just don't want to see them when we actually play our game, so we'll turn their visibility off, and you can see if I preview this, we don't see them anymore, but if I click on the up portion of my D-pad, my character will move up, and of course if I push left, right, and down, everything works. And of course if I slide from one region to the next, or slide out of that region, you can see that it'll stop in place. So now that we've set up the D-pad, setting up the red and blue buttons is just as simple. So we're going to jump back over here and we want to create two more actors. So I'll create a red actor, click the plus icon one more time, and name this one blue. Again, I'll drag in that temp image so that we can see it as we drag it over our buttons. So I'll drag the red actor and resize it over the red button. And of course do the same thing with the blue actor. And what I recommend now is just taking any of these behaviors and plugging them in and seeing, uh, doing some different interesting combinations of these different behaviors. But I'll just go ahead and put something in really quick. So let's go ahead and double click on our red actor. And I'm going to create a rule. that when this actor is touched we're going to go ahead and change an attribute here and again the attribute we're going to change is the only one that we've created in this tutorial which is controls and let's change this to red and let me jump over to the blue actor Create rule. When this is touched, we're going to change the attribute controls over to blue. And now, what do we want to happen when this attribute here has red as its value or blue as its value? We already know what happens when it has up, right, down, or left, but we need to make something happen to our actor when this area contains the word red or contains the word blue. So let's go back to our main actor here, double click on the letter A, and we'll create some new rules. So we'll create a new rule, and we'll again we'll switch this over to attribute, click on game, controls, and when this contains the word red, what do we want to happen? Well. We can pretty much choose any behavior we like, but I'll just go ahead and grab a rotate behavior. And again, I'll hold the Alt key to duplicate this rule that I just created. And when this, when the game controls attribute contains the word blue, let's go ahead and change our character size. Make sure you delete rotate from there. So we've set up two new ones and this one up here I'll name as rotate and this one I'll name as size. And let's see what happens now when we preview our scene. I'll click on red and our character rotates and I'll click on blue and our character changes size. So again, we can go ahead and change the visibility of those two actors. So I'll double click on red. And in graphics, I'll uncheck visibility and double click on blue and uncheck visibility as well. And you can see when we preview our scene, we don't see any of those images, but we can control our actor moving around the scene.